This, so this is a picture from uh, the first Linux conference, um, which actually has our president of engineering sitting in there amongst the various people uh, putting Linux up in the air. But while we have a prestigious uh, history in open source, it's gone a lot beyond the enterprise grade Linux uh, that many are familiar with. So you, know, you see that box. Uh, it would actually was, SUSE developed the first enterprise Linux distribution. It also developed the first enterprise OpenStack distribution. And, uh, and by happenstance, it actually has the first enterprise Cloud Foundry distribution, which is the team that it, it came in through acquisition. But it's not this, the work that SUSE is doing around Cloud Foundry is using a team that's been working with Cloud Foundry since the day it was open sourced. Um, and, and that's the, the old part of the active state team. And that, you know, the first version of that distro, you know, congratulations to Pivotal on their IPO today, but we've actually been distributing a version of Cloud Foundry since before Pivotal was a company. So uh, a larger look at what SUSE is today. Um, at the very top, the, the green part, we, we talk about Cloud Foundry and, and application delivery. That is the platform as a service space. However, there's a lot of things uh, that support that. And while our distribution can run on any Kubernetes you want, plug into various uh, enterprise storage systems, you happen to be also be, get these things from SUSE in terms of the SUSE uh, container as a service platform for Kubernetes. Obviously, the OpenStack distribution I mentioned. And uh, there's offer a software-defined storage. It's Ceph. We call it CES, SUSE Enterprise Storage. Virtualization, all the various other pieces. And, and management that goes along with. So from the SUSE point of view, we are looking at the much larger platform stack and delivering that in, in uh, an enterprise-grade manner to uh, large and, and small enterprises across the world. A little bit of look more at SUSE Cloud Application Platform that is specifically our distribution of Cloud Foundry. Um, I know it, it's all 100% open source. Uh, various people, Troy was, had it showed in the demo theater, github.com slash SUSE slash SCF. Uh, this is more the, it's a, it's a bit larger when you come into the product version, but here's a view of it. Uh, an important thing to note, you know, when you're looking in the workloads, that's SLE, SUSE Linux Enterprise, uh, the, the abbreviation there. So one of the key things that we've done is we've replaced Ubuntu with an enterprise-grade Linux. It gets faster updates uh, and, you know, much more security around that development style there. And pretty much everything that you have is running in a containerized manner in cloud application platform, running uh, side uh, on top of Kubernetes so you can have things that are, are much more natively integrated, much smaller footprint as well. This also happens to run on uh, Azure uh, at the moment. That was, that was our announcement this week with the update to the cloud application platform. All of this then running whichever Kubernetes you particularly want, but that could be public cloud, private cloud, bare metal, et cetera. Um, so, you know, the big hype message here, it's very easy for Kubernetes users. That is our, is our target. Our, we're making the assumption Kubernetes is the next infrastructure as a service plus platform. Uh, provides you a smaller footprint. It is 100% open source, and it is all based on uh, enterprise-grade Linux. So when I talk about being easy, uh, there's, there's, there's four bullet points here. Only two of them are required to actually install Cloud Foundry on Kubernetes. The other two are just watching that everything's coming up because you know, they, uh, when you do a Helm install, Helm, for those not familiar, the kind of a de facto package manager for, for uh, Kubernetes, the, it, it tells everything to start up and then you have to wait for your liveness and readiness probes and everything to come in order. And so we watch that, but basically we install UAA, we install SUSE Cloud Foundry, that's the SCF there, and you're pretty much done and you're ready. And, and that's the same uh, certified distribution that you would find from all of the other vendors just running entirely on Kubernetes. Uh, and a little bit about the other contributions, you know, we, we, this is the product, but obviously we're a 100% open source company. We believe very much in an open, open philosophy. Uh, we have developers working upstream in the CAPI teams, routing, Oz, BAPI, and the Bosch CPI teams. The, another thing that was discussed more at length this week was the uh, contribution of the Stratus UI to the CF incubator. So you'll find that, that moved from the SUSE GitHub. It's in the CF incubator, uh, Cloud Foundry incubator GitHub now. And 
uh, as well making SUSE Linux a viable OS base, which is something as well we're working on to provide and, and then be available via Bosch.io. And um, thanks to Sanjay at SAP for also mentioning some of the other work streams that we're doing for the further integration of Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. And that's what I want to talk about today. And don't forget we're hiring, so you know, if you know anybody interested, we'd love to chat with them. <laughs>